السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. How are you feeling? You ate well? You ate well? Ate in a balanced way? <laughs> More than balanced, that's imbalanced. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who feeds us, that we are fed by, and when we feed ourselves, we do that to the extent that our hearts don't fall into a dormant state. Uh, may we eat for the purpose to awaken spiritually. May we eat, though eating is a, is a physical act, is an act of this world, that it is intended uh, as a spiritual objective, that it strengthens and it should strengthen our, our, our awareness, spiritual and moral, rather than make us forget that and uh, uh, make us uh, distracted from an awareness of our spiritual realities. And that's unfortunately what happens sometimes. Please remember in your prayers, all of you, as I, we were asked that one of our sisters is sick. Our sister is sick, and please keep her in your, in your prayers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her shifa. Her name is Maria. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her healing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her strength. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, fill her heart with uh, spiritual certitude such that whatever befalls her is easy and light on her insha'Allah ta'ala. Ya Rabbi Ameen, Ya Rabbi Ameen, Mushfi'a Anta al-Shafi bi rahmatika, Ya Rahman al-Rahmin. Allah Mushfi'a Khana Ikram Haseen. Allah Mushfi'a Khana Ikram Haseen. Allah Mushfi'a Khana Ikram Haseen. Ya Allah, and all of those who are sick, and Allah bless the mother of our brother Liyaka who passed away just two days ago. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive her and bless her soul and enter her Jannah, insha'Allah ta'ala. And may He subhanahu wa ta'ala give healings and shifa to all of you and all of us and all of those who are suffering. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal them and fill their hearts with iman and with certitude, insha'Allah ta'ala. Ya Rabbi, Ameen. Let us continue, insha'Allah ta'ala, and we have only two hours left. And again, I think if you didn't believe what I said to you earlier about laws of physics don't apply into in certain realms of realities, uh, sometimes time, even in this reality of ours, there is, as what you know, psychological time, and yet two hours would pass and you feel them like sometimes a minute, two minutes, three minutes, and sometimes ten days in two hours. And that depends on the state and on the reality of what we are inside. That's another indicator, a spiritual plausible indicator for what we were saying earlier, my dear brothers and sisters. We continue, inshallah ta'ala, and I'm going to again <coughs> uh, share with you uh, now in an, in an abbreviated form and fashion what I wanted to share with you about some more of the details. But this time it would have led us that is what we said before, to, for me to share with you, as I said for the first time, in a public fashion and not in a cursory fashion, though what I'm going to say in these two hours, I think, would still be cursory, but not too cursory. Uh, there will be some details that I have not shared with you before, at least myself, in public, and that I will share them, inshallah, ta'ala, here, for uh, they are very, I think, very simple, and and uh, the texts uh, that deal with those are very solid, very sound, very authentic. And alhamdulillah, it is about, again, the spiritual favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed His most beloved messenger with. And that we ought to know that, because that's part of who He is. And that would certainly, by the grace of Allah, help modify and modify the attitudes of our hearts and minds towards 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and therefore towards the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In general, as we pointed out earlier, whether inanimate or animate, insha'Allah ta'ala. And mainly the topic, as I said earlier, of tabarruk and tawassul. Bi Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The topic of, uh, you know, the blessings and the intercessions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is there such a thing? And of course, all of you should know, as Muslims, most of you, that to answer these questions, we need to refer to the texts and to the authentic texts that survived textual criticisms of the scholars. And that's where our answers lie, of which the texts that were pronounced either in the Quran or in the Sunnah of Rasulullah or in the tradition of our predecessors, especially the scholars and the saintly scholars, men and women, and that's basically what I'm going to do here as uh, I have compiled some of those texts of the ulama ta'ala, who have not left a stone usually unturned uh, in order to communicate to us uh, what Allah blessed them with of knowledge pertaining to God's, Allah's relationship to his Rasul وسلم, and our relationship to his Rasul and, and the brief um, presentation begins by an ayah of the Quran Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu says Allah Azza wa Jal Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah wa abtaghu ilayhi al-wasila wa abtaghu ilayhi al-wasila which literally, literally would mean something like this O oh, you who have attained faith who you who believe, who have attained faith. Ittaqullah. Be Allah conscious. Wabtahu ilayhi wasila. And seek the means of intercession to him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wabtahu ilayhi ibtahu is to desire and to look for something with desire. Al wasila, al wasila is a means to something. And therefore, the concept of tawassul, the verbal noun, the, the, the masdar in the Arabic language, uh, a tawassul, namely, is the active form of the noun of seeking that, uh, that connectedness, that wasila, that means of connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, all Muslim scholars agree that of the most important wasail plural of wasila is to do righteous deeds, to act righteously, and morally, spiritually, and kindly, and justly, and fairly, and benevolently, and magnanimously, righteously, in other words. And a'mal salih the righteous deeds are a wasila, are a means of connecting to God, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to imploring and seeking his special relationship with us, his special personal relationship with us subhanahu wa ta'ala, by seeking it, though, as many of us know, that comes also through his merciful love, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, wasila is not only specific to that, but in language, of the Quran, this came in general term. Ay lafdun an, al wasila. And it came unqualified. Mutlaqa laysat muqayyada. Amma laysat khassa. The word says, ibtahu ilayhi al wasilata. The word al wasila is open, unqualified, unrestricted. In other words, everything that can be a wasila to God. Let it be one of that which is lawful, of course. And therefore, most scholars have argued, al-wasila is not only our deeds, but everything, which includes, as we shall see later also, the person of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, as we shall see. 
says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, in the Quran, when he was telling us about his beloved messenger Musa alayhi salam, Moses, فَبَرَّأَهُ اللَّهُ مِمَّا قَالُوا وَكَانَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَجِيهًا فَبَرَّأَهُ اللَّهُ مِمَّا قَالُوا وَكَانَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَجِيهًا الوجيهة is an adjective, sifa, an attribute, from الوجاهة and from الجاه is an adjective to imply, describing Musa alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala absolved him of what they ascribed to him of deficiencies and elected him as a wajih, i.e. one with a very special status with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wajih, with jah. In other words, what he says, what he requests, what he asks is taken lovingly and caringly by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and would lovingly and caringly answer his requests. He has a jah. But when we go to someone, we want, you want uh, somebody to do you a favor, legitimately, hopefully. And instead of going to him or her directly, you go through someone who has a special status with that CEO or with that person. So that person has a jah in the presence of the director or the president or this or that or the king or whomever. So we go through him to help us, to help our case be understood or appreciated or answered or favored by that authority. So that's jah. In other words, to have a special affinity in the hearts of others, in the minds of others. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described his messengers in this case, Musa alayhi salam, as one with jah, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. كَنَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَجِيهًا What does this mean? I hope you're understanding what it is leading to. That there are human beings who have special wajah, and special jah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we mention the first text, that's in general, al-wasila in general. And al-wasila is the use of a jah of someone to achieve something. And here he's saying to us that there is a human being, for example, like Musa alayhi salam, or like Isa alayhi salam, and so on, who have a jah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is Allah for the all of that, all of that, I want to skip detailed discourse so that I can cover enough material, inshaAllah ta'ala, hafidhakallah, but the fact that min al-jah wal wajaha wal wajah kullu hadha lahu dhal, kullu dhalika min dhak. But the point is, al wajaha wal jah wajihan from that. Wajih is an adjective from al jah as well. Even Allah says about Rasulullah sallam, describing the polytheists of his time who were very uh, arrogant, very um, uh, um, treacherous, and very violent and very hurtful, as you know, who tortured and who killed and who assassinated and who simply <coughs> did not want uh, to allow the freedom of expression of Rasulullah and his followers in believing in one God, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And despite of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as they say, well, if you think you are this and that, and you are on the truth, why don't you invoke your God to punish us? And to lay his punishment upon us collectively now. And sometimes when they say that, God subhanahu wa ta'ala answers and informs his Rasul to say, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِي وَعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِ سُبْحَانَهُ Of the many meanings in this is this beautiful meaning of wajaha, of jah, of wasila, and so on, of means for salvation and means 
for safety and for peace and for security and for forgiveness, he says to them, subhanahu wa ta'ala, telling his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Quran, and God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is not to torment and punish them while you are amongst them. In other words, the physical, very physical, not only spiritual and moral presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informing us a means and therefore a wasila by which he subhanahu wa ta'ala does what? Forgives others and does not punish others simply because he physically is with them and therefore his person sallallahu alayhi wa sallam becomes a wasila, a means, as we understand from this text, for forgiveness and for not punishing those who otherwise deserve punishment as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ikraman li nabiyyihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as an act by which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa shows this dignifying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows this dignifying divine act of his, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallihi wa sallam. And so on, I, again, I want to be as brief as I can, and I'm, I'm able, though I'm skipping many things. Uh, Allah says, وَلَوْلَا رِجَالٌ مُؤْمِنُونَ وَنِسَاءٌ مُؤْمِنَاتٌ لَمْ تَعْلَمُوهُمْ فَتَطَعُوهُمْ فَتُصِيبَكُمْ مِنْهُمْ مَعَرَّةٌ بِغِيرِ عِلْمٍ And so on. And says Allah Azza wa Jalla, لَوْ تَزَيَّنُوا لَعَذَّبْنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْهُمْ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا لَوْ لَا رِجَالٌ مُؤْمِنُونَ وَنِسَاءٌ مُؤْمِنَاتٌ لَمْ تَعْلَمُوهُمْ فَتَطَعُوهُمْ In other words, Allah is saying, this is famous, uh, it is relating the incident of what? Al-Hudaybiyyah. Says Allah Azza wa Jalla, were it not for the presence of believing men and women, together with non-believers and so on in Hudaybiyyah, were it not for those and that you would not recognize who is who is who and then you would hurt them, Allah would have caused his punishment to descend upon the unbelievers. In other words, this is not only the presence of Rasulullah but the presence of the regular believing man and women becomes an instrument, becomes a means of expression of divine mercy to everybody else. Just their presence amongst them, as this ayah indicates. And I think this should remind some of you with a text, a hadith of Rasulullah in which he is related to have said, Lawla, Lawla, ubba, lawla ibadun, عبادٌ ركع ولولا عبادٌ عبادٌ ركع وصبيةٌ رتع وبهائم وصبيةٌ رضع وبهائم رتع لصب عليكم العذاب صبا أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم وسلم so even the presence and this is a wasila for God to forgive he even said صلى الله عليه وسلم were it not for Yani people who constantly lay themselves prostrate and kneel in worship of God. And were it not for the presence of infants and children who nurse, and were it not for animals who graze, God would have constantly showered upon you and poured upon you torment after torment on account of your iniquities and transgressions. But here is a wasila. Vatiya. In other words, Wasila physically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by that presence, He subhanahu wa ta'ala instead treats many who deserve amongst us otherwise punishment, He treats them still with patience and kindness and gives them respite upon respite. There is an ayah in the Qur'an, in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَكَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ يَسْتَفْتِحُونَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فَلَمَّا جَأَهُمْ مَا عَرَفُوا كَفَرُوا بِهِ وَكَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ يَسْتَفْتِحُونَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And they, these tribes, before the 
coming of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In other words, they used to yastaftihun ayatlubun al-fatih. Now I'm going to tell you what the majority of the mufassirun that I read, including Ibn Kathir, and before that al-Baghawi and al-Baydawi, and after that al-Anusi, and before that al-Thalabi wa al-Thalabi, and al-Razi, and the series of his greatest mufassirun, all of them has mentioned one of the meanings, and some of them only that meaning, of this ayah. For all meanings are possible in this case. And يستفتحون على الذين كفروا أن يطلبون من الله الفتح بتوسلهم إليه عز وجل بالنبي المنتظر وهم بنو إسرائيل. The Jewish tribes around the polytheists at that time, when they had conflicts with the polytheists, they used to invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him in the name, يتوسلون إليه, in the name of the awaited prophet who shall come in this area. And at that time, they were expecting that he be always an Israelite. But it turned out, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, that he was an Arab still of the descendants of Ibrahim, of Abraham, of Ibrahim, alayhi wa ala salatu wassalam. So most of the Mufassirun have mentioned that. يَسْتَفْتِحُونَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنْ يَطْلُبُونَ مِنَ اللَّهِ الْمُسْرَةَ وَالْفَتْحَ تَوَسُّلًا بِهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم قبل بعثته يتوسلون به إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى. And this is another of the evidence of who he was, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the haqiqah of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And of course, the tawassul that is intended, and that is the proper one, is that the person, or the human beings, or the believers, turn to God, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking him, and from him, to answer their prayers, and using the relationship of love and of special divine favors that he bestowed upon, say in this case, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to grant them this and to grant them that and to forgive them and so on and so forth. In other words, this is not asking the person, the man himself to do that independently from, I underline, independently from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but nay, it is Allah who is worshipped, Allah who is asked, but this is a wasila to him. As I mentioned, the ayat indicate, and the texts are plethoric, it's a plethora of texts that uh, emphasizes that also, and I have chosen only a few, and I'm going to move uh, uh, swiftly soon, inshallah ta'ala, to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu in that. And of course, this shafa'ah, this uh, capacity to intercede on behalf of God that God spoke to us of in the Quran in many, many texts. It is he who granted it to those who intercede. It is he who owns it and it is he who gave of it and made it to be owned by others of his creatures. وَلَا يَمْلِكُ الشَّفَاعَةَ إِلَّا شَهِدَ بِالْحَقِّ says Allah Azza wa Jal. No one possesses intercession except the one who witnesses in truth and the ulama say witnesses in truth i.e. the one who says لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ مُحَمَّدٌ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted some of those the power to intercede, nay the favor rather, to intercede on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا يَمْلِكُ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ الشَّفَاعَةَ إِلَّا مَنْ شَهِدَ بِالْحَقَّ وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ As one ayah of many, many, many ayat in the Qur'an, that some of you who know some of the Qur'an, or hopefully know all of the Qur'an, know that there are many, many ayat that are very clear and very explicit about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granting as a gift the favor, if not the power, to intercede on behalf of others with God, with Allah 
subhanahu wa ta'ala on account of the karama that we mentioned earlier, on account of this um, spiritual divine love that he had for them and give them the special gifts in honoring them and in ennobling them. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa alayhim. Salatullahi wa salam. I'm going to mention first few texts about actual practice of the companions of Allah and the early predecessors relating to this concept of tawassul and tabarruk. Uh, by the way, tabarruk, the essence of tabarruk and seeking blessings, is using something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, laid upon by His grace, meritorious spiritual yani, qualities. We use that as a means to approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to ask him. That's tabarruk. And tabarruk is actually tawassul. That's in essence, what, that's what it means. God has special law for this thing or that one. Tabarruk means, seeking their blessings means, we use that as Allah azawajal permitted us, we use that love God has for them, that special love God has for them, or that special love they have for God, and that special knowledge they have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and drew nearer to Allah Azza wa Jal, we use that to implore Allah to answer our prayers in things that He loves subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's tabarruk. Tabarruk is a form of tawassul also. So, what I'm going to mention, I'm going to mention it without, I, I hope I can do that, without commenting on it. Until the end, after either either you are tickled inside of you, inside of you intellectually and spiritually, or you are amazed, or you frown, and then we can say after that what we might and, and should conclude from that. In this case, I'm going to mention to you the sources from which all of this is taken. In Sahih Muslim, in the authentic compilation of the great critique of Imam Muslim rahimahullah ta'ala about and relate about the jubba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the mantle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we're talking about asma after the passing away of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam years and decades after that and asma was the daughter of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and the sister of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She said about her jubba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha passed away, she passed it to her. The jubba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is again a repeat in Sahih Muslim. And she said, نَغْسِلُهَا لِلْمَرْضَى نَسْتَشْفِي بِهَا Quote, unquote. We wash it when somebody is ill, we take that jubba and we wash it in water. And then we use the water, it's not thrown, it is used as a means of healing for diseases. To wash the body, to even drink it, and so on. This is what the Sahaba عليهم, did in accordance to Sahih Muslim. Uh, you know, some of you should know that Bukhari and Muslim are the greatest authorities of textual criticism in the Islamic world amongst the people of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah. In Sahih al Bukhari, he relates, Rahimahullah ta'ala, from the companion, the woman companion again, Umm Salama, radiallahu ta'ala anha wa alayhi salam wa ardaha. She used to have a small container, jaljal, min filba, made of silver, in which she kept parts, hair, 
part of the hair of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi of his beard or of his head that were kept very meticulously and safely. And if one person falls sick, they send to Umm Salama, they send to her a container with water in which she, um, she drips those, those, uh, those pieces of hair and takes them out and gives them the, the water back and keeps the hair well guarded. And what they do with that, again, as Al-Bukhari relates from the authority of Musalama, يُبْعَثُ لَهَا بِإِنَاءٍ لَهَا فَخَبْخَبَتْ لَهُ فَشَرِبَ مِنْ أَيْ إِذَا أَصَابَ الْإِنسَانَ عَيْنٌ أَوْ شَيْءٍ And then if a person falls sick, they do that, they send that to her, she does that, they take that, that water, and he drinks from that water, the person who is ill, or the person who they feel has some, what they call nowadays, possessed and so on, things like that, who washes with that, or drinks from that water. This is tabarruk, and this is what? Tawassul, bil jamad. Tawassul, seeking wasila to Allah, because it is he who heals and everything, medication, what the pharmacist, sell, what the doctors uh, prescribe, all of those are means that God says pursue. But the healer effectively and actually in the reality of all dimensions, it is he who does that. So when we go to a pharmacist, when we go to a doctor, this is a wasila, is a means, and it is he who heals. These are also wasail, and wasail are not only that which some of us uh, because of the narrowness of the horizons of our knowledge, consider to be means. These are means as well. And this is, these are texts of the most authentic kind we can encounter in Islamic uh, uh, Sunni literature. Even a, a small jar that once was used by one of the companions Sahl in one of the incidents and he invited Rasulullah to his house and he asked for, for, for drinking water and they brought to him this small jar, this qadah in which there was water and he drank from it وسلم, and some companions drank from it afterwards and he kept that jar for decades on the side. This is in Al-Bukhari, in Muslim also until even the time of the great Khalifa, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, in the Umayyad time, istawhadahu minhu fawahadahu lah. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, when he knew about the origin of that qadah, that Rasulullah simply touched it, and touched it by his lips and hands, and he kept it, Al Khalifa, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, and asked that it be given to him and he, it was given to him, and he kept it for barakah and tawassul, or else for what? And I'm going to skip some of those texts, and I'm going to mention only some, as far as time can permit us, inshallah ta'ala. Some of you know the story, but don't know the end of it. And again, as I said, uh, sometimes some people narrate and relate stories, but they don't re re relate them completely. Um, for whatever reason it is, legitimate or and sometimes unfortunately illegitimate reason. And the text that many of you know, I think, at least some of you will read the texts and learn more, that again, uh, the mother of uh, the great companion, and at that time he was young, Anas ibn Malik, who was his mother? Okay, Umm Sulaim, anha. That sometimes, Rasulullah sallallahu you know, would go into her house. She's not there, and it, it, she was very, very close to, uh, to the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she was the wife of the companion who died, who? Talha, Abu Talha. Abu Talha radiallahu ta'ala anha. And he used to, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sometimes go uh, 
for a siesta in her house, for a siesta in her house. And one day he went, and as relates her son, and Rasulullah is there laying, resting, sleeping, and she comes and she finds him laying in that simple mat. And it was a hot day and he was sweating a lot. And he was sleeping or resting over also um, something laid down of, um, of Adam, i.e. Of, um, of, of a skin of an animal. But, you know, treated. And to the extent that his, his, uh, some of his sweat would collect on that, on that, uh, on that uh, firash. And she comes with, with small um, bottles. And she begins to collect the sweat in those bottles, and not and, and so that she doesn't wake him up. And he awoke and said, and he saw her doing that. Ya Umma Salam, Sulaim, what are you doing? And she said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm collecting your sweat in these bottles. And what most of you know, what did she say to him, those who know the text? What did she do with it? Ah, uh, you know that. Most know what? That the text is? Atr. That we use it as a? Atr, as a perfume. Part of a perfume for our children. That's one thing. Number two, the text actually says, نَرْجُوا بَارَكَتَهُ لِصِبْيَانِنَا Quote, unquote, verbatim. نَرْجُوا بَارَكَتَهُ لِصِبْيَانِنَا She said, رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَى عَنَا She said, we do that desiring from that the baraka, the blessings for our children. Said she, رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَى عَنَا And all of you know that in the rules of law, in Islamic uh, knowledge that the companions, whether they are men or women, their words are authoritative. And their words are like law. And what she said is like law, because she, as a companion, said, we use that as a baraka for our children. نَرْجُوا بَرَكَتَهُ لِصِبْيَانِنَا not only that, he replied, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَقَالَ أَصَبْتِ فَقَالَ أَصَبْتِ He said, you did well. Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam No comment, I think it's very clear. In what Imam Muslim related and others, he's in Hajj Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after throwing the Jamarat, throwing the pebbles, in the monastic of Hajj, what comes after that usually? How are you? Shaving the head. So he, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is sitting, and the halaq, and uh, the one who does his hair, uh, the, the, the barber, is now ready to, you know, to shave his hair. And he says to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, start with the right side. So he starts with the right side, and every piece of hair that falls, there is a companion waiting for it to fall into his hands. This is related by Muslim and others. Every companion is waiting for a piece of hair to fall into his hands. صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم يتبركون بها يتوسلون بها إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى. As a matter of fact, not only that, in many of these narrations together, together they tell you all the story. As a matter of fact, he also, when some of that hair was collected, he called where is Abu Talha, the husband of Umm Sulaim, and in one. Also, where is Umm Sulaim? And he gives and he tells them, give this hair to Abu Talha. Give this hair to Umm Sulaim. 
and then he said about the rest and give and then he said to the I think to Anastot or someone who was there and they collected there distribute this hair amongst the believers related by Muslim and others and that's why authentically indeed we can say that when you have in the top copy museum in Istanbul the hair of Rasulullah that's the history it's not fictitious it was preserved and kept by the greatest of the people of this ummah and by the sovereigns and by the caliphs and by the sultans and by the kings tabarrukan biha wa tawassulan ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala biha and they preserved that indeed wallahu ta'ala alam Muslim relates, Imam Muslim relates, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi every morning after the morning Salah, the Fajr Salah, he remains in the Masjid in Dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal and so on. And every morning, you know what they do? The people of Medina, as Imam Muslim relates, they bring buckets and containers of water, no matter how cold the day it is. And they bring it to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi so that he lays his noble hands in the water and they take it back home as an imam muslim relates يَأْتُونَ بِآنِيَتِهِمْ فِيهَا الْمَا لِيَغْنِ سَيَدَهُ الشَّرِيفَةَ فِيهِ قَالَ ابْنُ الْجَوْزِ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى يَطْلُبُونَ بَرَكَتَهُ scholars like ibn al-Jawzi comment on this seeking by that the baraka, the blessing of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala an, and now you know the story, Umm Sulaim was his mother, the hair she collected and the, and, the, and the sweat she collected and so on. Anas radiallahu ta'ala an, awsa an tudfana sha'aratun lil nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam am'ah, related by Bukhari. Again, in accordance to the greatest of all critics, Al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala, he says that Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala an, left a will that when he's buried, that hair that he had of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam be buried with him in his shrouds. For what? Tawassulan ila Allah azza wa jalla bi athari al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And the al-Athar jad, yani jamad, jamad. This afar, this, this relics of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are people who would say they are lifeless. Yet, look what those who knew him best and understood him best, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, did in actualizing their understandings, radiallahu ta'ala anhum wa ardahum. Again, telling you and me more of the haqiqah of whom Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sallam was, and at the same time, this is now it is telling you and me how should we behave towards his person, towards his relics, towards anything that is of him and about him, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sallam, unlike sometimes, unfortunately, what some of us in a dry, legalistic, and intellectualistic approach prefer to say without going into those details. Look, I did not mean to mention this now because of, of time uh, restriction, but I'm going to mention it. Many of you know the text related by Imam Muslim, again, one of the two greatest critiques of texts in Islamic history. He said that, uh, relates again from the authority of the companions, that Rasulullah was passing one day by two graves and he was aware, again, his awareness of the beyond, of the realm of the Barzakh, that those two men are actually being punished in their grave, in that Barzakh reality. And he said, what were the sins that they committed, some of them simple sins, and therefore, the punishment is commensurate to whatever sins committed. 
if there was no forgiveness and no repentance, and he described what those sins were. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he say? Do you remember some of you? When he said, فَدَعَى بِعَسِيلٍ فَشَقَّهُ وَجَعَلَ عَلَى كُلِّ قَبْرٍ مِنْهُ نُصْفَى So he asked, please go get me fresh branches from a palm, living palm tree. One branch. So they brought that to him, and he cut it into half, he slit it into half, and put uh, on each grave one of those laid it in, 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 in the dirt, and planted it, if you will, on the grave. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لَعَلَّهُ يُخَفَّثُ عَنْهُمَا مَا لَمْ يَيْبَسَى He said, in other words, may Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala um, lighten their burden as long as these two leaves are fresh, or these two branches are fresh. <coughs> What does this text mean? What does this text mean? This is a tawassul to Allah by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa with an inanimate object as long as it is fresh and that he hopes and prays that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lightens the punishment of those two people in the grave as long as these branches are fresh. This is a tawassul, this is a tabarruk, and a tawassul in this way. Some ulama have said, rahmahullah ta'ala, this beautiful way to understand this, he said, because one of the meanings of that, we know, as Allah told us, that everything is in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. These fresh branches, as fresh, they are in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. So that dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal is brought nearer to this grave so that the person in the grave benefits of the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal of those branches. Subhanallah. And indeed, most of the ulama say, indeed, the deceased ones benefit of the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal and of the Quran that is recited at their graves. Most of the ulama say that, rahmanullah ta'ala. So this tabarruk and this tawassul ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by this way. These are inanimate even objects. Ibn Sirin, the great, as an Imam al-Bukhari relates, the great tabi'i scholar and commentator and muhaddith and hafiz and so on, رضي الله رحمه الله تعالى when uh, he said to one of the greater also uh, uh, tabi'een uh, that is students of the companions that they have of the hair of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that they obtained from the family of Anas whom we mentioned earlier and his mother, uh, Umm Sulaim. And then he said, when he told him that, Abu Ubaidah, this great other, Tabi'i said, لَأَن تَكُونَ لِي شَعْرَةٌ مِّنْهُ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا فِيهَا As Al-Bukhari relates, said he, what means, were I to have one hair of that, Oh, please, it would be most beloved to me than any treasure in this world. For what reason? Tabarrukan wa tawassulan ila Allahi subhanahu wa ta'ala bi thalika bi afarin nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam and this and this tells us more about who Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam was. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in what the Imam Muslim relates and others. Many of you have heard of the story of the saintly person in the time of the early Muslims or the early Israelites, Juraj. You know the story of Juraj. Juraj al-Abid, no? Who doesn't know it? Raise your hands. 
I don't have time to tell you the story. <laughs> but I tell you what briefly this teaches us. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to tell you about the story. I can't. So I'm going to say it as briefly as I can. I used to be a young man who was devoted to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the early times of Bani Israel. <coughs> devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so devoted that there was a Salma'a built for him, a special sanctuary built for him, where he devoted himself to the love and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from time to time his mother comes and visits him. And she from Outside the sanctuary, she calls, Ya Juraj, and he comes and, and tends to her needs respectfully and caringly. And one time he was in prayer. And she, this is Bukhari relating that and others. He was in prayer, and she calls him, Ya Juraj, and he doesn't answer. And Rasulullah said, and Juraj in himself says, Ya Allah, Salah, my prayer, or my mother? In other words, you are my mother. And he decided that it is you. My prayer goes first. And I don't want to go into details of all of this. I said, I'm going to say it as briefly as I can. And I'm not saying it as briefly as I want it. <laughs> so he doesn't answer her. He doesn't reply. And she da'at alayhi. She invoked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to subject him to a trial that righteous men and women don't want. Actually, she simply told him, you are your age, may you not die until you will look at Al-Mumisat, until your eyes will be laid on Al-Mumisat. The word used usually in, in books like the Old Testament, harlot. Okay, you know what a harlot is? You're laughing. You don't know what a harlot is? When were you born in this country? <laughs> I'm glad you don't know what a harlot is. You should never know what a harlot is. A harlot is a promiscuous woman. Who, who has uh, you know, sexual relationships with others outside of a valid contract of marriage. Let's put it this way. And she said, SubhanAllah, may you not die until you lay your eyes on a harlot. She was, how come you didn't answer me? The ulama of this ummah, of Muhammad وسلم, from that text have debated whether when you are in salah and your mother calls you, whether you should stop your salah or not and answer your mother's call. Most of the scholars say, you answer your mother's call, believe it or not. Some say, some have differed, some say only in supergatory salawat. And some say, even in obligatory salawat. By the use of this text, related by Bukhari. <coughs> the story I said, I'm not going to go into details, and here I am. Just so that you don't think that there were no details, and I'm just saying, I'm not going to say details. So please, I hope by this, you would, have a, you would have a statistical approach to my approach that when I say that, it's true. So I'm not going to go into details again. And so it happened that, subhanAllah, time passes, years pass, and a woman, وَلَيَادَ billah. Uh, to make the story shorter, had this promiscuous sexual relationship with a shepherd in the area. And then she was impregnated. And that was the early Muslims of Bani Israel. And that is a sin. So they inquired after she delivered the baby, they inquired, how did you get that? not married. And she said, Joraj did that to me. The one in the sanctuary in the summer. And they came to him, angered, you hypocrite. 
This is who you are in reality. And you think you are, you are a habit of Allah and you show us you are this and that. And they began demolishing his sauna. And they said, what's happening? What? What? And they beat him and beat him. And then finally they told him, finally, after beating him and demolishing his, his sauna, his sanctuary, they told him what the woman said. He says, no, I did not. They would not believe him. He said, please, please, follow me, allow me, let me go to her. So he goes to her. Where's the baby? Here's the baby. And he addresses the baby. Now this is the miracle, they call it here a miracle. This is the karama Rasulullah teaches us. And he addresses the baby in the cradle. Who is your father? And the baby speaks and gives the identity of the father, the shepherd. For all to behold, and then they started, says Rasulullah and this is my point. Says Imam Muslim in this in this um, in this riwaya. Says Rasulullah then they began to kiss him, his body, and uh, and, um, and 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 touch and caress and wipe over his body for Baraka and Tawassal, says Rasulullah Sallallahu and said to him, please allow us to reconstruct your sanctuary and your sama'a in gold. He says, no, only in clay. Only in clay, says Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sallam. And Imam Ahmad in his Musnad relates, Imam Ahmad in his Musnad relates that one of the women companions of Rasulullah and I think in this case also it was I think Umm Sulaim or Umm Salama, I do not recall. There was a qirba, you know, a skin container in which they put water. Nowadays even in the countryside it exists to cool water, to keep it fresh. Rasulullah drank from the mouth of it. She cut the mouth where Rasulullah laid his, his mouth and she kept it with her tabarrukan bi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another example of the most yani, of, of, of the most power, of the most recognized of authorities in Islamic uh, tradition. Ali radiallahu ta'ala an as the Imam Ahmad relate in his Musnad, when Rasulullah was washed, his body was washed after he died, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, water was collected. And the text teaches Ali radiallahu ta'ala an would collect that water and used to drink it. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu arba, this companions that most of you know as the gate of knowledge, the gate to the city of knowledge, as some hadith describe, and most of the ulama say this is an authentic hadith, Ana Madinatul Ilmi wa Aliyun Babuha, radiallahu ta'ala an, most of the ulama say this is an authentic hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said about Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, I am the city of knowledge, and Ali is the gate to it. Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, wa arwah used to collect the water with which Rasulullah was washed, his body is all tahir, dead or alive. <laughs> all the four schools of thought I read in the books of law, of sacred law, all four schools of law, the first ones were uh, the Shafi'i, I think, and the, and the Hanbali first, that everything that emanates from his body, sweat, everything that comes from his body is tahir. كل فضلاته طاهرة صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم. This is in the four schools of thought. Dead or living. صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم. 
الإمام ابن الجوزي رليس للوفا ذات الرشح رشح عرق رأس النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم كان أطيب من ريح المسك في 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 this if you will I have to use the proper words uh, proper adab with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the sweat from his head sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his hair that would um, be that would be that will leave a mark let's put it this way on something he put on his head or so and it used to be sweeter than the smell of mosque they said and when somebody is sick this is after his death sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and there were some people who had preserved that cloth or that head cover in which there was that uh, mark of the sweat from the hair and the head of Rasulullah and they preserved it and when somebody falls sick فطلبوا, and somebody fell sick فطلبوا أن يغسلوا بعض ذلك الرشح فيصعط به رجل مريض ففعلوا فبرأ so they requested the family of the, of the ill person, the sick person, that at least part of that, please allow for, a, for part of that mark of his, of his sweat to be washed by us, and we collect the water gently, and يُسَعَّطُ uh, بِهِ To give it, تَصْعِيط uh, is what? Um, inhale it with your, in, your, in, your, in your nose gently and it was done and the man was healed <coughs> as al imam ibn jawzi in al wafa relates rahimahullah ta'ala it's past four o'clock i was supposed to stop here and give you an hour of questions and answers but i'm not going to do that <laughs> and i'm not going to stop because i have to stop at five o'clock and let you go inshallah ta'ala so, uh, and I don't want to, to go or let you go. Though I know, alhamdulillah, that some of you don't want to let go, but we will stop, inshallah, ta'ala, at 5 o'clock. And please, thank you. It's good to have you, Scott. Thank you. Thank you very much. Al Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, ta'ala, relating his musnad that, and again, I'm going to be brief. No, not brief. I'm not going to say anything of the story behind this. And now you believe me that there are details that I'm not going to say for now. This young woman, Rasulullah gave her a qilada, a necklace on some occasion, that he himself uh, put on her neck, around her neck. And when he did that, and she relates, for the Allah ta'ala anha, for wallahi, she said, لا تفارقني أبدا وأوصت أن تدفن معها this قلادة of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم that he with his hands uh, honored me with and with his own hands put around my neck I shall always preserve always and before she died she left a will that it be buried along with her in the grave what does this mean? Tabarruk and tawassu bi athari sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. wasallam. I'm going to, at this point, stop saying more of the many texts about the tabarruk and the tawassu bi athari. I'm going to make a comment that I said I'll leave towards the end, and then I'm going to add more texts of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. This is the practice of not one companion, of not two, of not three, of not in special occasions only, this is a number of companions. Not only personally who have done that, but other companions have observed that and favored that, not only permitted that and accepted that, but favored that as well. This is law. Now that's number one. Number two, what it also means, it means the following. This is an act of tabarruk and tawassul with what? Quickly. No, just directly what the texts were saying. All inanimate, All inanimate objects. But the ha that had somewhat connection to? 
or Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi But the objects themselves are used, were used by the companions as a means of tabarruk and therefore tawassul or tashaffu, call it whatever you want to call it. The meaning is that they use it as a means to implore Allah directly or indirectly, verbally or tacitly, to implore Allah for safety, for healing, for goodness, for, for iman, for, and so on and so forth. Is it clear? Is it irrational to conclude this from the text? It's actually very direct from the text. Now, if that's what the text teach us, about Afar Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they are jamadat and inanimate objects. What about his person? What about to ask Allah Azza wa Jal by his person, Ya Allah, I ask you by your Rasul. Again, after what I said up to this point from when we started, not only what I said last, because I think I meant it to be in this order to convey the rationale and to convey a series of evidence and argument that lead to strengthening one another, to making the point. So what about his that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And before I say more, when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by our deeds, and all the ulama agree to that, when we ask Allah, Ya Allah, I ask you by this righteous act, if you know it is righteous that I have committed, Ya Allah, forgive me or do this and that to me. You all know that in the hadith also that was related by Imam al-Bukhari, where those three persons invoked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by something righteous that they did. And they tawassalu wa tashaffa'u bi tilka al-a'mal wa staghathu bi tilka al-a'mal ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's all agreed upon. Now, if your qalb has followed, and not only your dry intellect, has followed up to this point what we said, which is more desirable to you as a means to Allah, your acts or Rasulullah? <laughs> Do you see the point? Do you see the point? That I ask, Rasul, I ask Allah by my acts, I did them, Rasulullah is dead. Subhanallah, he died. So why ask Allah by him? He's dead. And your acts are living. And you gave them so much life, your acts, and so much significance that they are worthy in your sight and understanding in the presence of Allah as a means to Allah, worthier than Rasulullah's person. La'amri. And what I say to you is what all of the ulama of old have basically said and meant some ulama of late from the time of Imam Ibn Taymiyyah and later some of them and those who follow some of these views of Imam Ibn Taymiyyah have argued differently Every pure blooded horse fumbles. It's okay. But this is what the Ummah has been about. And by the way, those of you who read, and I don't know how many of you read well and read a lot, and then read a lot or all of the works of Ibn Taymiyyah, I read. Ibn Kathir, one of his greatest students, who disagreed with Ibn Taymiyyah on many issues, on this issue is one of them. He had said that Ibn Taymiyyah in, in, in one of the majalis, in one of the scholarly encounters of some of the ulama, and the story is long, that he finally rescinded. And that he agreed when it comes to the matter of tawassul bi rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but he said don't call it istighatha that's his only point we don't have time to go through those details but that's what it seems ibn kathir said in his tarikh al bidaya wa nihaya when he speaks of the year i think 707 or 711 and what happened in, the, in that year rahimahullah ta'ala jami'an now 
after having said that, and there is a lot more to be said, did Rasulullah first of all ever say, do not ask Allah by me? Do not implore Allah by me. Do not seek me as a wasila or as a jah or as a shafir with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the ulama, as far as I read and as far as I know, never anyone mentioned any text that exists like that, whether spurious or authentic or weak or very weak. No text exists. Keep that in mind. It's very important. Are there texts in which Rasulullah said, ask Allah by me? The answer is yes. In addition to what we said up to this point of what the deeds of the companions were. And that would lead to the tawassul by his that very rationally and very clearly. But assume some will not accept that. Were there texts? 